So transitioning to the corporate world, the civilian work sector, what was the biggest challenge you faced coming from the Army? Uh, the Army, we have a really regulated structure and things that we do, um, the timeline and how we operate and we do things a certain way. Uh, and when I moved into the civilian sector, uh, it was completely different. You know, there, there were our rules, right? But um, that regulated structure on you had to do things uh, on time, you had to uh, turn assignments or uh, projects in on time and meet deadlines. We still had them in the civilian sector, but it, it was just this more relaxed um, posture when dealing with things like that. And that was something I struggled with. I was used to this regulated structure and you know, waking up in the morning and working out and doing PT and then going into work at a regular time and that op tempo of that, the sense of responsibility to the mission. And the civilian sector was a little different. Like I said, it was a little more relaxed. Um, but at G Cubed, uh, it was op tempo again was up high where we're accomplishing things, we have goals and we're uh, making out plans to achieve those goals and those objectives. So. Uh, being a GQ just helped me to overcome that that lack of, of regulated structure um, that existed in the civilian sector. Work-life balance. I know you have a big family and adding in our current circumstance of remote work due to the pandemic, how do you achieve work-life balance? Absolutely. It definitely is a, a challenge and a juggling act that my wife and I have uh, obtained and kind of we're still working through. Um, we do have four children, our oldest is in kindergarten, and uh, my wife is an active duty soldier still, so she works on a uh, remote schedule and alternating work schedule as well. Uh, so being that we're both working parents and we have children, um, once our kindergarten transitioned to remote uh, schooling, they do Zoom sessions and they have uh, coordinated times throughout the day that they are obligated to log into their Zoom session with their teacher and have a virtual class. Um, however, we also, my wife and I have daily obligations to our jobs as well. So having that open communication and determining, you know, when can I help um, Aiden do his Zoom sessions and when can she do the Zoom sessions has, has been a, an interesting juggling act, but we've been making it work. Um, we've been able to have him log in and do his classes and still manage to take care of our other kids as well. So um, big juggling act, but we are working through it. What do you wish the higher ups industry wide would understand about veterans entering the workplace? I wish that the senior executives in the civilian sector would understand the quality of a candidate that a veteran brings to the table into their organization. Um, oftentimes they may be overlooked or uh, senior executives may categorize them or fit them into a, a box and you know have a preconceived notion on what they're getting with the veteran. But uh, it's the complete opposite, and I beg to differ. Um, I have met a lot of highly qualified uh, veteran individuals uh, who bring that, that grit and that uh, determination that they had in the military uh, to a civilian organization and are able to excel and exceed uh, standards just because we have that, that determination that you know, we'll always place the mission first and accomplish our mission. And uh, I would encourage all senior executives to take the second look. If you have a veteran candidate and a regular um, civilian person, don't uh, overlook them and don't have a preconceived notion. Give them the fair shake and you will find out that you made a good choice, that veterans do bring a lot to the table from that workforce uh, and obligation and determination that they bring with them from the military.